Hi, I'm Claudia Baldi, adjunct professor at School of Design of Politecnico di Milano, where I teach retail and merchandising design in the Fashion System graduate program. In the preceding lesson, you went through the meta design process and phases and the definition of the retail design concept. The aim of this lesson is to illustrate the concept development phase, describing the translation of the given system of codes, languages and design attitudes previously outlined. The concept represents the design team's preliminary response to the brief and needs to be fully developed by providing a framework to ensure that all aspects are properly and consistently defined, planned and communicated. The concept development starts after the concept approval and, most of the time, involves different professionals and skills. In order to have a good result, we need to consider the concept as a statement that gives the project its path, meaning and complexity. It's important along all the concept development and project definition phases to keep the concept as a decision-making guide. The different steps of the concept development phase can be summarized as follows. Feasibility and initial design, space planning and interior design. During the first step of the process, feasibility and initial design, we start to take on board more functional and practical consideration, such as location, budget, timing and building regulation. Most of the time, the precise location of the store and the feature of the space are defined by the concept itself as an essential part of the idea. Being in a specific street or area of the city can be considered as a statement, able to deliver meaning and add value to the brand. In this case, the location is an element of the brand image and it's already specified during the definition of the concept. If, for many different reasons, the location requirements are more flexible, the first step could include the site research. Sometimes the peculiarity of the place should be considered as opportunity, even if framed by constraint. In order to define the initial design, start to outline the project and then proceed to the space planning and interior design, we need to survey the location and point out every important aspect, like accesses, windows, stairs, emergency exit, and so on. Space planning and interior design is undoubtedly, from the specific point of view of our topics, the most relevant part of the process. To design the space means to translate all the meaning and promises of the concept into a real space. Therefore, if the working team doesn't include whoever designed or conceived the concept, the complete and deep comprehension of the sense is essential. As you will see more in depth during the week dedicated to visual merchandising, the way we set the layout is substantial to reflect the intangible relation between the different zones of the space. Different zones must be visualized as different steps of the customer journey. Of course, we need to consider also all the technological devices required to connect the brick and mortar space to virtual experiences and frame them into the retail space in order to create the conceived experience. Defining the layout is a multifaceted activity. One aspect that is essential to verify regards all the logistic aspects, such as warehouse loading and unloading, replenishment of the shelf, and easy access to private area for the staff, if needed. 
Keeping in mind all the logistic restraints, we can define layout and furnishing. It's necessary to approach this step and the interior design for retail spaces in general not just as a design task, but mainly as a communication activity. To define the ergonomic and proxemic aspects of the retail space means to shape the space and therefore the relation between space and users. Through shapes and relationship between the different parts of the space, we can influence human involvement and the manners inside the store, promoting certain behavior instead of hazard. The visual, physical and emotional relation among the different areas and departments is written with paths and shaped spaces, able to encourage movement or dwelling. With the layout and the interior design of a retail space, we carve the space of the experience. To sum up, in this lesson we started to see how concept generation and concept development are deeply related activities and we began to go through the steps of the concept development phase.